Hello there, this is Rabbi Denise. This is Erev Yom Kippur. It's considered the most important holiday and I'm coming to you from a hotel room. I'm just gonna show you sort of, you know, this beautiful space that I got myself in in a beautiful part of the world. Um, I'll post some pictures of my kind of adventures today, but I visited these sand dunes, which I'd never been to before. And they're only a couple hours away from where I live. And it's just such a reminder that there's so much beauty around us. Most of us live close to just these treasures and we don't often make time to do that. Um, so for me, for Yom Kippur, and people in Secular Synagogue know this from our services and we're gonna be doing them tomorrow. We don't have a Kol Nidre service. Um, it's a little bit less somber than some. I'm all about kind of less oi, more joy. Um, there are moments where we're going to be grieving and um, in remembrance, but also I wanted people to experience the beauty that the high holidays have to offer, and especially Yom Kippur, which is such an important holiday. So in lieu of a Kol Nidre service, I'm doing uh, The Other Way to Listen by Bird Baylor, and the illustrations are by Peter Parnell. I know text is backwards, but um, the illustrations are most important. And this really kind of resonated with me for how I wanted to come to this holiday, so I offer it to you now. I used to know an old man who could walk by any cornfield and hear the corn singing. Teach me, I'd say, when we'd passed on by. I never said a word while he was listening. Just tell me how you learned to hear that corn. And he'd say, it takes a lot of practice. You can't be in a hurry. And I'd say, I have good time. He was so good at listening. Once he heard the wildflower seeds burst open, beginning to grow underground. That's hard to do. He said he was just lucky to have been all by himself up there in the canyon after a rain. He said it was the quietest place he'd ever been and he stayed there long enough to understand the quiet. I said, I bet you were surprised when you heard those seeds. But he said, no, I wasn't surprised at all. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world. He just smiled, remembering. Another time, he heard a rock kind of murmur good things to a lizard. I was there. We saw the lizard sunning on a rock. Of course we stopped. The old man said, I wonder how that lizard feels about the rock it's sitting on and how the rock feels about the lizard. He always asks himself hard questions like that that take a while to answer. We leaned against another rock a long time past and then he said, did you hear that? They like each other fine. I said, I didn't hear a thing. He said, sometimes, Everything being right makes a kind of sound, like just now. It wasn't much more than a good feeling that I heard from that old rock. Were you surprised to hear it? I always had to ask. He said, not a bit. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world. I said, I wish I'd heard it too. He said, he thought I might someday. He told me how a friend of his once heard a whole sky full of stars when she was seven. And later on, when she was 83, she heard a cactus blooming in the dark. At first, she didn't know what she was hearing. She found it just by following the sound. There were 20 flowers on one cactus and they were all white as the moon. The old man said, most people never hear those things at all. I said, I wonder why. He said, they just don't take the time you need for something that important. I said, I'll take the time. But first you have to teach me. I'd like to if I could, he said. But the thing is, you'd have to learn it from the hills and ants and lizards and weeds and things like that. They do the teaching around here. Just give me a clue on how to start, I said. And so he said, do this. Get to know one thing as well as you can. It should be something small. 
don't start with a mountain. Don't start with the whole Pacific Ocean. Start with one seed pod or one dry weed or one horned toad or one handful of dirt or one sandy wash. I said, I'll take the sandy wash. He said, he started with one tree. Every morning of his life when he was young, he climbed a cottonwood and sat there listening. He told me it was worth the time. He said trees are very honest and they don't care much for fancy people. And he said he doesn't know of anything he ever did as important as sitting in that tree. Tell me everything you can, I said. He said, well, you have to respect that tree or hill or whatever it is you're with. Take a horned toad, for example. If you think you're better than a horned toad, you'll never hear its voice, even if you sit there in the sun forever. And don't be ashamed to learn from bugs or sand or anything. I said, I won't. He thought of one more thing. It's good to walk with people, but sometimes go alone. That way, he said, you can always stop and listen at the right time. I'll remember everything I said, and I did, but nothing worked. I thought there must be something wrong with me because I only heard wind and quail and coyotes and doves, just things that anyone could hear. I almost gave up trying. Of course, I still went walking in my hills. In fact, I used to sing to them a lot. I thought that since they wouldn't sing to me, I'd sing to them instead. The day I'm telling you about now, I was singing, and the whole song was this. Hello, hills, hello, hills, hello, hills, hello. That was after I had been away five days, and I had missed those hills five days. I went out earlier than usual. You know how everything looks new at sunrise? Well, all those hills were looking new. I was just walking where I always walk, but that morning, I kept thinking, here I am. I'm gonna just interrupt for a second and say, those words are so resonant for the high holidays and my Rosh Hashanah commentary touched on them. So little intertextuality. Back to the story. Whatever happened, whatever way I happened to go was always right. I climbed the rocky side, not the path. The rocky side is steeper, but I like it best. And anyway, that's where I found my three hawk feathers. I stood at the top where I always stand looking down. Hello hills, hello hills, hello hills, hello. All I knew is suddenly I wasn't the only one singing. The hills were singing too. I stopped. I didn't move for maybe an hour. I never listened so hard in all my life. Of course, their kind of singing isn't loud. It isn't any kind of sound you can explain. It isn't made with words. You couldn't write it down. All I can say is it came straight up from those dark, shiny lava rocks humming it moved around like wind. It seemed to be the oldest sound in the world. All I can say is, I was standing in the middle of that sound at seven o'clock in the morning, just thinking, here I am. And thinking, listen, and not even being surprised. It seemed like the most natural, Thing in the world. So I come to you when people, you know, dress to the nines for these holidays and I'm sweaty and sort of a mess from hiking and being outside, but I really tried to listen to those hills today and I hope wherever you are, you're able to tap into the wisdom of nature and the beauty of the Jewish tradition if you are marking Yom Kippur in some way. And you don't have to do it the way it's always been done. You don't have to listen to Colney Dre tonight, but listen to the sounds around you, to the people you may be around, to the nature you may be around, and 
importantly, I think at this time of year to the, you know, small voice inside you that is telling you what you need. And this is the completion of the 10 days of awe. So we've sort of gone through a spiritual journey and we move into the rest of the new year. It's not too late to be asking yourself, who do I want to be this year? And how can I show up? So with the places I stand in and with the people I stand with, I could truly say, here I am. Wishing you such a meaningful Yom Kippur. And uh, if you are with Secular Synagogue, we will meet uh, tomorrow for our Yom Kippur service and a sort of special Musaf service, a little add-on service we have going on tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, have such a beautiful holiday and such a wonderful year to come.